Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back as we enjoy another uh, conversation with John Mariani, the virtual gourmet and a regular contributor. Uh, how are you doing, John? I am well. John, I am a big fan of your writing, as you know. Yeah, um, and of course, these days, we, we introduce you as our regular contributor, our editor for food and travel. And these days, of course, nobody's traveling. And so you haven't been writing about travel for eight to 10 weeks, because what's the point? Uh, nobody's getting on a cruise ship. Nobody's getting on an airplane and going to Europe or Australia. However, I want to take exception with that. I love your travel articles. I think that your travel articles are, for me, even though I'm not going on a cruise ship, even before COVID-19, they're an escape for me. You transport me to Italy or Germany or France or the wines of Australia or Argentina. I love your travel articles because they not only talk about food and restaurants, but you capture the city for me. You capture the country for me. You, I really get a feel for, it's a real tourist uh, article. And, and I just, I think it's great. Obviously you're writing as a, not necessarily a critic, but as a consumer for the consumer. So you, you mentioned prices and you mentioned service and things like that. But for me, your travel articles transport me to another place where I may never go, but I still love reading them. I want you to go back and start publishing more travel articles. I'm dying to. I mean, it, it's what I do. And I have, I have, if tomorrow the pandemic was all over, I have about 20 weeks of articles I had intended to write over the last 12 weeks, you know. And uh, so they're ready to go. And then I got to, uh, then I have to think about getting on an airplane and uh, whether I want to. Um, what I do know is I do not want to get on an airplane to uh, Memphis, Tennessee, where I have to make a stop first in Cincinnati and change planes. Not only is that owner receiving the best of times, but um, increasing the the amount of, uh, of, of uh, exposure uh, even after this pandemic is over, is just not what I want to do anymore, um, especially at my age. But um, you know, what you said about uh, being somebody who may never get to these places, exotic or otherwise, um, there's always been a lot of armchair travel. Uh, the travel industry, the travel magazines, Connie Nast Traveler and also Travel and Leisure, they depend upon that. They know that most of the readers are never going to go to Bhutan, you know. So they send some, <laughs> they send some writer there, and he spends uh, two weeks and uh, writes very exotically. Um, and then they fill in the stuff about the restaurants and the hotels and little boxes down at the end of the article. Mm -hmm. But some of that stuff is just reverie. Uh, some of some of the adventure articles are just that. Um, I climb Mount Everest, and you probably won't. Um, so, and there's a value to that. A lot of the best. Uh, travel writing ever done have been done by writers who aren't travel or food writers like obviously like Hemingway uh, <clears throat> like uh, Jack London um, Jules Verne who never set foot out of France in his entire life wrote around the world in 80 days you know and uh, he was basing it on other people's <clears throat> reports um, but that's a wonderful wonderful book and made a great great uh, terrific movie in Cinerama um, so there is that. And when you said I write kind of uh, as a consumer reporter, um, that's that's true. I always ask myself before I go, what do I want to know about this place? What have I heard about this place? What do I want to capture? Where is the where is the culture different <clears throat> in around Madrid than it would be in um, another section of, uh, let's say, the Basque country? How are the Basque? people different. So I'm not going to go to the Basque country and either behave or or stay in uh, a <clears throat> kind of hotel like a stay in Madrid. I want to say something and report to you that if you are there, this is the type of place you really should stay. I'm not going to send you to another Marriott in Indianapolis if there's an old historic 
<clears throat> hotel in Indianapolis. Um, <clears throat> same in Rome. Now, I will say that I am a big fan of uh, luxury, <clears throat> of deluxe hotels. I think Four Seasons and Ritz Carlton do phenomenal jobs of um, setting the standard, the new modern standard in many, many uh, uh, cities, international cities around the globe. Uh, sometimes, in case of the Four Seasons, for instance, in Florence, uh, the Four Seasons is set in what had once been a convent. And they did, oh, they also did that in um, in, in um, Milan. It took over a 15th century convent. So there's lots of architectural elements that they add on to that are quite extraordinary that you're not going to get if you go to the local Marriott or, uh, or, or Hilton or something like that. Um, so I do, I do really look for that type of thing. I like historic hotels. Like if I was down in your neck of the woods, I'd love to go to the old Coronado there in San Diego. You know, those, those type of places have great history on their side. And some of them are, need redoing. Um, I remember the first time I stayed at the Beverly Hills Hotel uh, back in the 1970s. And my God, this was the equivalent of a high-end holiday inn at best at that point. Um, shabby chipped furniture and rattling air conditioning. Well, that was the Beverly Hills Hotel. <coughs> so, excuse me. Um, I always look for something that's singular and then try to tell the <clears throat> tell the uh, reader why you want to go to Harry's Bar in Venice. Don't want to miss it. <clears throat> why you want to go to the Harry's Bar, which is completely unassociated in uh, Paris, uh, because that's very much part of Paris. And <clears throat> they may be touristy. And every tourist may want to go and see the Bridge of Sighs in Venice, but you really don't want to miss it. Or I'll tell you, if it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Don't bother. You, you know, uh, well, John, um, uh, a thing that marks uh, a lot of your writing, certainly in, in the uh, conversations that we have, is the texture of uh, the subject matter. It's not just uh, a bar. It's not just a countryside, but it's um, uh, what the, the earth is made of and maybe how individuals all congregated to a certain place in order to uh, generate this, this texture of, of food and, and drink and language and what have you. And the closest I've ever come to seeing that is um, a, a history series written by Will and Ariel Durant, The History of Civilization, oh, yeah. where when every subject matter that they took, they they got to some place and then they would talk about the politics, wars, famines, uh, soil, and all the things that made that a very special time in history that they wrote about. And so it seems to me that that's sort of what you're bringing when you go someplace. I'm expecting that I'm going to get more than just, I stayed at the uh, Four Seasons. No, that's not what you do. <clears throat> without prejudice. One of the problems with the uh, <clears throat> 19th and even well into the 20th century uh, writers, specifically the British, who always went everywhere with uh, uh, their nose in the air. Um, <clears throat> as a matter of fact, uh, they said of the British writers uh, or the British travelers on the Grand Tour that uh, they would get to a city and flop down in the best hotel in Venice and have their passport to type of person uh, go out. You, you go out and see the sites and tell me what they're like. Well, a lot of writers carried prejudices and the same stereotypes that they had read about. So when they went to China, <clears throat> they expected all these Chinamen to be a certain way with the cues and, and silly people and opium dens. And you've got to go with a very, very open mind because uh, all people everywhere are uh, pretty wonderful. And uh, if you go in with prejudices, you're going to... Uh, I, I remember when the movie Deliverance came out. Oh, yeah. Sure, sure. <clears throat> and the whole theme of it is that down there in Georgia on those rivers, you got a good possibility of getting cornhole by some hillbilly. Well, that set of shivers through everybody's spine as what that was, uh, what, the, what the South must be like. And in 1977, my wife and I drove cross country for uh, 14 weeks back and forth. And um, we had to shake that, well, we're in Alabama now. I remember seeing a sign with Governor Wallace's face on it. And it said, uh, welcome to Alabama. Don't drive through it like hell. You know, oh boy. 
probably a, a state trooper behind the sign there. Um, so we shook those. It took a while to shake to shake those prejudices, but you've got to do it, and you find wonder everywhere. John, I um, I love your uh, travel writing. I'm looking forward to you getting back to publishing some of those articles picked up. And meanwhile, I'll have to go to your archives and read the old ones about Rome and Italy and Milan and Paris and it's still just Burgundy. A, you know, they, yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting when you say that. That let's say if you go back and read an old article of mine about Rome uh, after this pandemic, I don't know if it's going to be different. I can tell you one thing: Rome and Venice and Florence were being so overrun before the pandemic that going to them became very arduous. And I even vowed I'm never going to Rome in the summer or the fall. I'm not going until January. Now all bets are off. You probably could go to, well, right now you could walk to Rome and throw a bocce ball through it, not hurt, uh, not hurt anybody. But um, uh, after this pandemic is over, tourism will respond, but I don't think it's going to be at the level. So there will be different cities. Well, well for those of you who are sheltered in place yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, want to have the richness of uh, John Coleman as a little kid picking up a National Geographic and saying, oh, I'd like to go there someday. Yeah. Uh, you can go to uh, johnmariani.com and go to the archives and go from one foreign place to another foreign place, exotic places probably you'll never see, and some that you will mm. and perhaps now see in a whole different light through John Mariani's eyes. So yes. uh, with that, I suggest that... Um, that's a great way to uh, spend a couple hours a week or more uh, because you've got, what, 20 some odd years of archives and trips and, and great food and all the right. other things that you. you observe in your unique way. Thank you, Art. I appreciate it. Good. And of course, we want people to go to uh, youtube.com celebrating slash celebrating act two and watch our interviews with John his reportage here for Celebrating Act Two. Meanwhile, it's time to say goodbye. John, thank you. Art, see you soon. See you guys. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.